Welcome back to Game Brigade. My name is Brian, and uh, I don't know, what was this? I haven't worn a long sleeve shirt since I was like seven years old or something. And uh, gotta get, well, okay, long, whatever. Hello everyone and welcome to Game Brigade. My name is Brian and today I thought it would be interesting to talk about my favorite accessories in board gaming. Well, what does that mean? I figured I wanted to talk about the things that uh, kind of make board gaming more fun or make my life a little easier uh, in terms of gaming or my preferences in terms of what I enjoy. So I've got a whole bunch of crap all over the table here and we're going to talk about which ones I like. Now I have no clue how many I've grabbed so I don't know if this is a top 8 or top 10 and I'm not going to be listing in terms of what's the best. These are just things that I found that I loved and I want to just express that with you and show you. Before I get started, I think it would be kind of fair to say that this video is not sponsored. So none of these companies have sent me anything or given me anything to share. Actually, not true. One company has sent me something. And I will say that when we get there because we got to make sure we're clear on everything. But overall, this is not paid. Okay, this guy. First one, and we're doing this one first because it's huge. There's actual board games in here, and I want to get off the table. This is a board game bag by BoardGameTables.com. I also, you're not going to see it unfortunately, but I have a, a play mat on my computer desk that I use to cover my entire desk, so all the way to the front and back and everything, uh, because I love not having to worry about a mouse pad, and I love that I got, so I got the big one. It's like 74 inches. Love it. Love it. And uh, I would have brought that over here to show you because the playmat is some of the highest quality. It's very thick. It's very squishy. I've accidentally spilled coffee on it and was able to clean up very quickly. So the playmat from BoardGameTables.com is probably one of my favorite actual playmats. Uh, but we don't get to see that. I wanted to show the bag. I was a bit skeptical. I can't say that word. Skeptical. I was a bit uh, apprehensive. There we go. Uh, about a bag and would it be useful? Would I ever use it? And as soon as I got this bag, I actually use this way more than I thought. First off, it's got, um, where'd it go? It's got, here we go. It's got a backpack section if you wanna wear it as a backpack. You've got the uh, arm handles, how I normally use it if you wanna just hold it. And then it's got the shoulder strap if you wanna hold it on your shoulder. So it's got everything. Ugh bunch of stuff in here uh so you can you can carry it in a whole myriad of ways of depending on you know how do you want to carry it what do i use this for the first thing i obviously use it for is when i go to a friend's house i load up the games in here and i can keep everything contained in a singular box and i can also get, get an idea of uh do i have everything so it's nice to have that preloaded and it's uh take it over and, and, and bring it to the location the second thing i've actually found myself using this for is when i take it to like board game swaps and i need to sell stuff originally i would have a real hard time figuring out how am i going to bring all these games with me all the time i was using like uh, uh grocery luggage things before so having this has been a great help the only thing that frustrates me, and I don't know if you can see it, is I get these stringer things that kind of like this thread that kind of comes out. I don't know what that means. I'm not like a, a tailor or, or anything. So I don't know if that means the quality could be better or, or if it's normal to have like little stringers coming out. Uh, the, the, the structure seems good. So I've been happy with it. And for the price I paid on their Kickstarter, I was even more happy with it. So that's the first one. We're going to get this out of here. So the BoardGameTables.com bag as well as the playmat are the first ones. Let's do this one because this company actually did send me this product. They sent me this product a long time ago and uh, they said, uh, you know, no obligation to talk about our product. We just want to share it with you. I said, great, I'll, I'll try it. I have used, this is, uh, what is this from? Uberstacks, I believe. Yeah, uberstacks.com. It's unfortunate that it's black, so you can't really see it, especially with the shirt I'm wearing. I've got two different products here. 
The first thing is a tray to hold tokens, and these are actually built together. So the whole point of the Uber stacks is that you can take them apart, stack them, build them in any kind of manner you want, kind of like Legos or Lincoln Logs, depending on how uh, old you are, uh, which I enjoy. And so what do I use these for? Uh, right now, primarily what I'm using this stuff for, my Uber stacks, are for my Le uh, my League of Legends, my Marvel Champions gameplay. I will put all the different tokens uh, around in here, and then I set with this one the uh, the villain and all of their cards up here with them. And with the way it's structured, I can have this stand upright, and I can have all the cards facing me, which is great. The other thing that we've been starting to use these for now is anytime we're playing like, uh, uh, say, Dune Imperium, where there's a menagerie or some sort of uh, a, a global supply where people are going to be purchasing cards from, and we need those visible, instead of leaving them facing down, we can now place them here and everyone can see them from a, a, a fixed position. So I've really, really enjoyed both of these products. Uh, they So they sent me two different ones. The first one was the trays. The second one was these kind of card holder things. The other reason I use these, now this is more of like a content creator thing, is I will put cards in here because it's easy to film cards and they're facing upright on something like that. So those are the two products uh, that I've also really enjoyed that I get a lot of play out of them. Okay, so let's put them, let's put them right here. The other thing that kind of goes with tokens uh, are these uh, little uh, trays. I have these, now they have magnets in them, so you can see that they kind of, let's see how I get, right there. They can kind of lock together. Not very strong magnets, they're not earth magnets, uh, but they are strong enough to kind of hold in position like that. And my wife got these for me from Etsy. Now, if you guys are interested, I could put the Etsy store down in the description down below. I've had people ask me before, what are those trays that you're using? Uh, and they are basically 3D printed with a bunch of magnets put in them with alternating uh, polarizations on those magnets. Now, what I like about these is Wormwood has made a similar product, but they seem so much more shallow in terms of how you how many tokens you can actually put in there. So uh, this one has been super great because you can get so much more stuff in there, and the price was great because it's just 3D printed. I mean, you could probably 3D print them yourselves if you are a 3D printer. So we're gonna put those over there. Speaking of Wormwood, I got a Wormwood Dice Vault, and I wanted to show you this one because this is what I use for my D&D &D nights. And I very much enjoy, you know, D&D &D nights are few and far between in our player group. We're still trying to get them going. Uh, but I have this, and normally what uh, you can do with something like this, I right now have uh, some black dice down here, and then I have the metal dice that I reviewed on my Instagram up here. And then if you want to, you can put a mini in here, and you can actually take out these layers of uh, cushioning if you want to have a bigger mini fitting in there uh, based on the size of what you designed. Uh, and then you can have it all padded and protected. Uh, I very much enjoy this piece. Uh, it has become kind of a statement piece or or a, uh, what's the term, like a design. I have it on my shelf kind of um, sitting out. The wood quality of this wormwood is incredible. If I could express uh, how good this was. And I picked this up on a sale that they had. I think it was like a Black Friday sale. Uh, it was one of the woods that they were discontinuing. So I'd say if you're looking for something like this, if this is something that's like always been outside of your price point, check Wormwood's sales and see if you can find something that is going on sale that might be within your, your price point because you're surprised, you could be surprised at how affordable some of these uh, dice vaults might be. And if you are a D&D &D player or someone who uh, likes having a custom set of your own dice, this is great. Now I got the vault that has multiple storages. You could also get the one that's just a single row that has only a single vault in it. Uh, but I thought, you know, for my money, I thought it'd be better to have the three vault one. I thought it would just be a little bit more um, usable. So that's what this guy is. I'm going to put everything over there. Okay. So this one, the next one is contentious because uh, I have so many of my friends, especially people in my player group who are now asking me about sleeves. Uh, and I will say I am a bit of a um, 
snob, I guess, when it comes to sleeves. I'm very particular with the feel and the texture of how my sleeves are. I, I really want high quality sleeves that are gonna last. I wanna make sure they're not gonna be bending at the corners, especially when they're shuffled or shotgun shuffled. I shotgun shuffle like this quite a bit. Uh, so I'm always looking for quality sleeves. So I've got uh, a box of Sleeve Kings here and I've got some uh, Game Genix. I wanna talk about each. So first off, to show you, I have a ton of sleeves. You can see these are all all the sleeves that I have, these are all kind of organized by uh, size and um, and whatnot. I mean, they're all organized by size, so that's pretty much how my organization is. So if I'm looking for something specific like 70 by 120 or uh, 68 by 120, I can just grab what I want. So I have Sleeve Kings and Game Genix. Now, why do I have the two? First off, I originally thought I was going to have Sleeve Kings be my permanent sleeve solution. So I bought the big box during the last Kickstarter, and I thought, you know, this is going to last me forever. And it included a whole ton of the standard uh, 60 micron Sleeve Kings. These are 63 and a half by 88 millimeter. These are the standard playing card size. Okay. Uh, and I found that with games that have a lot of uh, card handling, so cards that are deck builders or deck construction cards, I found the Sleeve King cards start to break down, not like in terms of falling apart, but just getting a little unattractive looking in terms of the card. And it made it, the card itself is still fine. Uh, the sleeve, like the exterior sleeve, getting a little crumpled, getting a little beat up, no longer holding its shape. And uh, I don't necessarily like that. I want my sleeves, one, to feel firm in my hand, but I also want them to last for a long time. So I have now switched to Game Genix with a majority of my uh, deck building and deck construction cards. So I want to talk about that. First off, do I use Sleeve King still? Yes, I still use my Sleeve King sleeves. If it's a game that has minor uh, shuffling or maybe very you know very little shuffling or very little hand hole uh, hand card manipulation if I'm just looking to protect my cards because I'm trying to protect my investment sleeve Kings is great but if I'm playing a game that's gonna have me shuffling a lot or I'm holding the cards with the deck builder or dune Imperium Aeon's End, although my friends made fun of me for Aeon's End, I'm still using it for my Aeon's End. Uh, Marvel Champions, Lord of the Rings LCG, Arkham Horror LCG, I'm using Game Genix now. And these are, I buy these 200 pack ones, 200 sleeves, standard card game, value pack, and these are matted. So I buy the matte ones. I'm not sure if this comes unmatted. I have seen uh, Game Genix release something called Just Sleeves, and that might be the unmatted version. But I buy the non glare matte version. I have a whole bunch in here for my use. Uh, and so basically that's that's what I use Game Genix for. So I and I've become a very big fan of Game Genix uh, because of this experience. I find that their sleeves so far have been very robust, strong. They keep the cards very, very slick. And in fact, I can kind of give you an example, maybe. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe you probably won't be able to see this worth a damn. Um you're not gonna be able to see because it it's all texture but i've got a sleeve king sleeve here and i've got a game genic sleeve here and you can see i don't know if you actually can uh you can see the sleeves here ben and this is just a little bit more uh stronger it's a little bit thicker in your hand it feels different so that is um you know why i enjoy those so we're going to push this to the side and we're now going to talk about this chonker. This is the most recent addition to my board gaming repertoire and that is a laminator. Uh, and this is actually a very recent addition to my repertoire because I've been looking for a solution for my organization for Lord of the Rings LCG as well as my Marvel Champions. My Marvel Champions, I was very, very happy with my organization process that I had set up, but I was getting out of room. I needed to move it to a bigger box and my bigger box couldn't accommodate my old storage solution. So what did I need? I needed uh, some way to uh, print dividers 
cut dividers and make them last for a long time. And so that's what a laminator is for. I was able to go to Kinko's, but you could do this from your home if you have a good printer, print off the dividers that I want to use, uh, put, place them inside of what is called a, um, a pocket. And that's what I have in here. These are three millimeter thermal laminating pack, uh, pouches. Um, we're just going to open it up. So these are pouches. So you open them up, you put your document in there, and then uh, you go ahead and place them inside the laminator. And the laminator is going to melt the plastic onto itself and kind of seal it together. Now, one trick that I found that I do is I really want, because I'll be then cutting using this um, straight edge cutter, I will be then cutting my, my cards up, you know, so that they fit properly. Uh, and so what I really want to do is I want to make sure that the lamination doesn't peel or come off. So what I do is I increase the heat. You have the millimeter temperatures up top. You have three, five, and six millimeter with this model. Generally, you only have three and five. And then uh, what I do is I run it through a second time. And that way that the lamination really starts to bond to the paper because it's just, it's just a token for me. But I really want to make sure it's laminated and bonded so I don't have to worry about it peeling. Now, what does that look like? Let me show you. Let me give you an example. This is one that I printed for Marvel Champions, and this is the Ghost Spider. You can see it's a, a pretty thick card, um, and I did this for every single one of my, my cards now, and so uh, very, very happy with how that turned out. And uh, in fact, we're now going to move on to this one here because this is kind of the second stage of uh, what we need to talk about. Let's make sure that goes back to. Uh, so yeah, that's we're gonna we're gonna talk about all that. But yeah, the laminator was a great pickup. Now you can buy these actually for fairly inexpensive on Amazon. I will put mine in the description down below, as well as the two things that I'm using. But you can probably find something that's maybe cheaper or something that's uh, more economical. I went with this one because the brand is one that I knew. And I was looking for something that would last me a long time. I just wasn't sure if like an Amazon Basics one would be as long term as I would want it to be. So I don't know. That's again me just making assumptions or guesses. Uh, but I've never done it. Okay. So the final items. It's more Game Genix plus this guy. This one is from Die Hard Dice, and it's unfortunate. I still love this, uh, but it's unfortunate that it, it's a potential been replaced a little bit, but not fully. This is a dice roller uh, that is magnetic, magnetic, and you can actually see how good these magnets are because you can just build it really quickly. It almost builds itself uh, just like that in front of you. Uh, and what I found is I really enjoyed having these because they were easy to store. I could store it in on my shelf like this flat. You can have like three of them on top of each other. And uh, when you're ready to go playing, if you're going to play a game that has some sort of dice rolling effect, I can be like, all right, hey guys, here you go. And uh, they just, they build basically instantly. And now everyone has their own uh, dice rolling tray. So I've really, really enjoyed this. Now, uh, in terms of uh, if you're looking for pure value, uh, when I get to some of these Game Genix ones, I could say that this could be replaced. But because of this as being so clean and good, I, I still recommend it. And they actually have a dice tower one. So if you're looking for a dice tower, these guys, um, Die Hard Dice, also sell that. So the final thing I want to talk about, and that's because I've been asked so many times about this boy. Uh, so we're going to go to all three. Uh, and so what do I have here? These are Game Genix boxes. Now these are for storage solutions for different kinds of uh, card games or whatever you may have. Uh, and what did I buy these for? Well, I was looking for some sort of storage solution for my LCG games uh, that I could basically have something that was kind of like an all-in-one. And I'm going to talk about it. So the first one I bought was this one. I would say this one is probably the least valuable for me. Uh, you can open these trays up just like this. You can see how it opens up. And this one basically has uh, different types of deck boxes that you can put, or deck, you know, deck boxes that you can place in here, as well as uh, token inserts here, and then another deck box down here. I used this one for a while for for decks that I wanted to take to a friend's house or something like that, uh, but it didn't include enough for me 
to make it used. So you can see right now it's not being used, unfortunately. Uh, just because I found myself uh, falling onto this one. The next one, uh, this one just got un, uh, undone. This one is probably the next contender. Now based on per basically collection size or what you're looking for, I could easily see this guy being a contender. And I wish I had the names. I don't I don't have the names. They don't put the names on them. They just say Game Genix. But this guy right here, when you open it up, it has uh, same thing. You got a tray here for all your cards. So if you're looking for your bunch of different decks or something, and then in here you have uh, some some spots for uh, some cards. So what I put in here were like my my damage uh, tokens and tray, like the uh, spin down dials, the bigger ones. Same thing up here, and then this folds down, and you've got some more dice trays in here, or not dice trays, uh, token boxes. Let me see if I can get this out. I'm pretty sure they come out. Yeah. So if you wanted to have more tokens and whatnot, and then you could actually have these, have your tokens on the table just like that. So what did I use this for? Basically, I would put my deck in here, and then I'd put uh, maybe uh, the mission or bad, the bad guy that we're gonna face. I wanted everything combined in one. When I found this next one though, it has become the go-to for me. And in fact, I bought two of them now. Uh, for both my Lord of the Rings and my Marvel Champions. And this is this big one. And I, I can't remember the name of it. But first off, I keep I can store whatever uh, expansion I'm working on. So whatever campaign. So I have the Sinister Motives in here at the moment. And then uh, I turn this upside down. Let me uh, fix this real quick. Do, do, do. Okay. So what do I have in here at the moment is I have my... Um, I've got all of my decks that I'm playing. These are all built decks right here. So I've got the dividers to show dividers. So I have all my decks. I have one, two, three, four, five, six different player decks available. And then right here is the entire expansion for Senator's Motives. So if I'm ready to play, I can just pull this now. I don't need to bring out my entire big box because everything that's going to be with my expansion is in here. Uh, and then in the sides here, I actually have uh, all my dials. I have sleeves because I'm going through and re-sleeving uh, my player decks. Remember I talked about how I was re-sleeving some of these decks like my Captain Captain America here is still in game is still in Sleeve Kings, and so when I actually play Captain America as I'm playing, I will be receiving him into the game Gen X. What's also great about this guy is that the both sides fly down here, and I can pull out both of these now. You've got a bigger one for more tokens as well as small ones, and there's two on each side. So I got more sleeves in here as well as more tokens on this side. So this thing has become my all-in-one enclosure. So now all I need in my storage solution that you can't see behind you is uh, the, the cards to basically build decks and deck construct. But once I'm done building, everything that I want to play with goes in here. And then I just have to grab this off the shelf. I can throw this in my board game bag. I can go to my friend's house and we're good to go. But I talked about that there was an additional thing where this thing can kind of get offset. I found this randomly uh, by accident. If you go like this, it also makes its own freaking dice tray. Like, look at that value. Like, that is insane. So this guy has definitely won my heart in terms of loving the game Gen X. They also have this exclusive color. They have a whole bunch of different colors. They have like, but they're all solid. So like, they'll be all red or all blue. I found this one that had the black and orange. I really, really like that. So I decided to pick that up. But yeah, that's, that's uh, all the accessories that I'm currently rolling with. And as I said, I run two of these now. I bought two of these for both my Lord of the Rings and my uh, Marvel Champions. You guys, you guys. I was, hold on. I was putting away all of my stuff for the last video. And I forgot one that was like one of the inspirations for the... Uh, the whole video. So if you want to make sure you see that, watch till the end. 
Uh, and so that's it. Th those are all the accessories that I'm using right now uh, in my board gaming hobby. Uh, hopefully that was helpful for you guys to maybe learn about something that I do to you know make this more enjoyable or things that are on the side. What I want to know is I know there are guys and girls out there who you guys have uh, other things that I don't know about. What are they? I want to know about what are the cool things that you guys are using in your collection to make things easier or just have more fun with things. I would love to know. Leave a comment down below. I'd like to see it. Otherwise, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. God, I remember I got to do this in the beginning. We always talk about this. Do your, your call to action in the beginning of the video, Brian. It's better for the channel. But yeah, subscribe, like, all the things. And I will talk to you all very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Okay, as I said, I was putting everything away and I said, damn, I, I found this. And this is the tape that I want to talk about uh, because I had one that was unopened. And that's what made me forget because I couldn't find it, but I found it. So what do I have here? This is Hugo's Amazing Tape. And I saw this on TikTok actually. And uh, it's incredible. So what I use this for, other than like binding which is not very good because i missed this part binding like my cables for video production you can also seal like cards i wish i had an example ah here we go so let's say i don't have a i don't have a scissors this is really impromptu but basically let me give you the rundown what hugo's amazing tape is it is tape that seals to itself seems to be forever lasting and doesn't stick to other things so i have that hugo's tape right here you can see it's right there it's holding this bound together but nothing sticks to it right and uh, so you just unseal it wrap it around whatever you want and then it's good to go so some of the applications that i've used it for right now are like wrapping cards like if i don't have a good way to keep cards together and I don't want to put a rubber band. Sometimes I'll use this uh, or whatever. So I found that this was a really cool idea. I've even contemplating like some of the boxes that don't seal all the way. I don't know how taunt I can get this, but I've thought about maybe like wrapping around to make sure they just kind of stay closed. So this thing's like 10 bucks. It's got tons of practical uh, applications. I would have wrapped around here to show you these cards. But you need scissors, and I don't have scissors, and I don't want to run around and get scissors. But I thought, hey, you know, this was this was the reason I wanted to do the video, one of the reasons I wanted to do the video. So why don't we add this little addendum to the end of the video? So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you check the links. I'll have them all down there. Now I'm going to be really gone. Bye-bye.